You said you want to put your litigation costs behind you. Obviously, this quarter, um, uh, you're booking a 963 million euro settlement with uh, the Libyan authority. Have you started um, the final settlement discussions with OFAC for the second half of this year for a settlement? Let me just remind you, first of all, we posted in the first quarter the impact of the settlement with the DLIA on the net profit. What we had to do in the second quarter is to uh, account in detail, and it's a bit sophisticated for in terms of accounting, but with no uh, impact on the net profit in the second quarter. Second, what we decided to do is to add to our provisioning, uh, to the general litigation provisioning, there is no significant development on the litigation. We still have to put behind us uh, the well-known litigations uh, uh, on OFAC, uh, uh, on uh, potentially Eurobor LIBOR, and uh, uh, potentially follow up on the LIA uh, in the US. We have these litigations. We we'll try to, do, to put that behind us as quickly as possible. We saw investment banking difficult for some of your rivals in Europe and also in the US. Uh, what makes a bank like Société Générale uh, more able uh, to offset uh, this difficult market environment? What we saw this uh, second quarter is, for example, less activities on the flow business. Uh, investors were more in a wait and see mode, but we benefited from our structured uh, product activities. So in, with a pretty diversified uh, business, which is, I think, well suited for the new regulatory framework, we are able to make progress with our clients, to make progress also in terms of uh, profitability because we have costs which are going down thanks to all the efforts we've made starting last year and with a cost of risk which is also very low and reflect the quality of the credit portfolio. So all in all, a return on equity which is progressing despite an environment which was obviously less favorable than last year. Do you believe this wait and see uh, attitude is going to continue in the second half and what could make uh, the investment banking revenues increase more in the second half? First of all, I, I think the uh, economic perspective are better. So I think we can see uh, still activity on the corporate side, uh, investments, uh, acquisitions, M&A, whatever. And on the markets, we have had a, a very low volatility also because probably people were waiting for some elections, you know, and. And when the, the clarity will be uh, even better on, on the elections, uh, I, I think things could uh, potentially improve, I, I guess, with more flow and more volumes. We have the political risk uh, that seems to be behind us in France uh, for now. Uh, what impact have you seen on your French retail? Have you seen a pickup in activity towards the end of the second quarter, for example? Definitely, I think there is a better mood in France, a better level of confidence. And for example, we saw in the second quarter an increase of our long-term investment loans to SMEs, uh, an increase by 10%. Uh, we saw also, as you know, GDP growth figures uh, pretty uh, solid huh, for, uh, for France as well as for Europe, actually, with a growth rate of around 2%. So I think it definitely reflects uh, the, the confidence level uh, improvement and I, I'm pretty positive for the, the outlook for the next 12 to 18 months, uh, provided there are reforms, provided new steps towards building Eurozone, I, I think uh, continental Europe can do uh, pretty well. There's very high expectations around the labour law reform in France. Are you concerned that some reports about the Labour Minister could undermine the government's ability to pass this Labour reform? I think we have had extraordinary uh, new political uh, circumstances and an environment, which means, uh, in my view, that the new president has the capacity to reform in France uh, in the coming months, in particular in the labour market, not just the labour market, also the tax system, as you know, with significant changes which should also further build confidence and in particular for investors who want to uh, put uh, equity you know in the French economic environment so I think that uh, I'm pretty also positive on the capacity to implement reforms. For now the ECB is keeping its uh, stimulus um, do you believe this is positive news for Société Générale? 
we'll see when and if the uh, ECB uh, is uh, starting to accommodate its monetary policy. I don't have any clue, of course, but if you have more economic growth, you should see at some point uh, also more, more inflation. The inflation is actually slightly picking up, and I guess with the labor market improving in a lot of markets, uh, I guess you might see then progressively some wage tensions and a little bit more inflation, which will probably allow at some point the ECB to start accommodating. And if it would be, of course, positive for uh, Societe Generale as for the other retail banks, as you know, because it's better to have to have no negative rates and a slightly uh, steeper yield curve. On Brexit, you said earlier this month that Société Générale uh, would move up to 400 jobs from London to Paris. Uh, have you started provisioning for these moves? Uh, and what is the budget in the worst case scenario? For us, Société Générale, which have strong presence both in Paris and London, <coughs> licenses, uh, staff, premises, etc., I don't think that the uh, adaptation to a Brexit scenario, which is still very unclear, is a significant challenge. What we said is effectively we think that between 300 and 400 people might have to move to, to Paris, and we have said we would choose Paris uh, uh, for relocating these people. I don't think it's a big uh, expense. Let's wait for the real uh, scenario. We have time. Uh, to decide uh, when uh, and how, uh, so we'll see when we have more clarity from uh, the negotiation point of view.